Passover starts on April 22nd, and boy, do we have a bunch of things going on. Um, haven't said anything about it because from April 13th, the 331 drones and missiles uh, and rockets that came from, from uh, both Iran as a country and a few of their proxies uh, towards Israel, and then uh, I've been waiting to see what Israel's response was, uh, because that's really an important aspect of the things we need to be talking about. But then as Monday rolled by, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then the Prime Minister of Israel saying that Israel and only Israel will make the decision on what response shall be, I mean, I mean, my heart was like yours, you know, my throat in my stomach, because it could easily be Armageddon, easily be the Battle of Armageddon. Now, there are several things, as Marcel and I were talking a few minutes ago, there are several things that need to take place, right? Uh, a peace treaty, um, they're a world leader, uh, I mean, several different things. The first three and a half years goes really good. The second three and a half years, very, very badly, uh, even deceptively so. Several of those ideas, but last, uh, a April 13th uh, is the ultimate moment where we, do we get another chance? Do we pray for the Holy Spirit yet? to allow Jesus to tarry. And I'm talking about God here, uh, waiting on his return so that we can get more people saved, more people coming to God, which I believe when we're in heaven together, that will be the most important thing because you and I exist on planet earth to connect people with God, to get as many people to heaven as possible. And God uses whatever it is we do for a living to set us up for open door opportunities to connect people with God. You and I exist on planet Earth to get people ready for heaven, both to connect them with God and prepare them for heaven through discipleship. Baptize and disciple. Teach, reach and teach. Uh, those are the most important things that we do in our lives. Now, the Passover in Exodus 12 give us a good uh, notion of how we ought to conduct ourselves in the process. The lessons learned from Passover, that's what I want to dig into today, the lessons learned from Passover. And I, I don't want to do this to bore you, so don't tune me out. These uh, always be ready, eat in haste, do exactly what you're told in obedience, don't deviate or be distracted from the plan. Those are biblical principles that we find in the Passover. I want to jump into that in just a second. Do a little exegesis on that passage in just a second. But before I do, you know, I want to talk about, and, and I, I felt the green light this morning, uh, and I'm trying to come to terms with this because a lot of people, because a lot of the things are still very uh, in flex. Uh, everything's very liquid in what's happening in the Middle East yet. And we can't know what the truth really is from the press. Uh, even if you backdoor around the press and find out through contacts what's exactly happening, the diplomatic means that they're using to accomplish what it is they want to accomplish really has to do, and, and this, is, this is very much end of times ideas. The diplomacy that's being used and the tactics employed uh, in their diplomacy actually is, is making people heroes. Uh, I mean, that's the whole point and purpose. People are trying to become big heroes. And we know that through eschatology, our study of end times, we know there'll be a world leader that emerges from all of this chaos and all this divisiveness that will take the world on a ride at the end of time. 
that they'll seem and appear like they're very much for the people and uh, have the influence and the potential to lead us to our own promised land, the whole world, and in, in fact will be the Antichrist. The false prophet idea will be a religious spirit about it. So many, many Christians, even evangelicals, will be greatly deceived and misled, as they already are. I mean, evangelicals are misled, and the evangelical voice, those people who claim to be born-again Christians, has been completely watered down because much of what God gave us we mishandled. We made, instead of really having an influence and an impact for Christ, we created religious celebrities. We fell into the pattern of the world. Evangelical Christians fell into, easily fell into, greatly distracted by celebrityism so that we create high profiles instead of high impact. I'm speaking into the body of Christ because he really wants us to be the bride. He wants to actually transition us from the body of Christ to the bride of Christ. These are the days of Elijah right now. I'm speaking in real time, all across social media, wherever God gives me a chance, whatever doors he opens. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, evangelicals today don't want to hear this message because it's a strong one about it being the end of times. And I'm tying it into, I realize as well, I'm gonna use the Z word here, Zionist, Zion. I'm more of a Zionist today than I ever have been. I'm more in the belief that not only do we need to stand with Israel, we need to go to Israel. And I know that that group that's going with me at the end of June, 1st of July, I know they're nervous about this trip, but as long as El Al will take us and IGT Tours will tour us, we're going to go. God willing. I should always say that. God willing, we're going to go and be there. Just as I was in December, we want to be there. This retaliation on the part of Israel that happened last night. Now, what is it? Uh, April 19th, and they're seven hours ahead. So it's almost Shabbat. We're on Shabbat Eve right now. It's almost, because uh, it's Friday, uh, late afternoon, uh, getting in to be early evening uh, for Shabbat. Um, they respond, and, and Monday is Passover, starts Passover. So we're just a couple of days from Passover. Uh, the retaliation from what we could tell, and it was leaked by the Pentagon. I mean, it's craziness. But from what we can tell, the, response, the retaliation from the April 13th attack from Iran had to do with um, kind of a warning, a shot over the bow back to Iran saying, and, and they fired on uh, the Air Force Base, the Iranian Air Force Base in Isfahan. And Isfahan is one of the three, one of the three major Iranian um, nuclear, um, I would call plants, but depots. Um, one of the, one of the three, it's Isfahan, my understanding is, uh, Natsaz, and Forda are the three Iranian nuclear power plants, nuclear facilities, nuclear uh, bases far underneath the ground. What Israel did was make it clear to Iran that they knew where their depots were and they could fire on them at any time. And Iran received that and, of course, everybody's filled with pride and tries to make their point. And Iran made it like nothing really happened here. There's nothing to see. And Israel's saying, we made it clear to Iran that we knew what they were doing and we can do this anytime we want to. That all being said, if and, and I'm speaking uh, in the morning here in Indiana, in my shop in Granger, Indiana, 
at um, almost a quarter to 10 a.m. Eastern time. So <laughs> something could happen in the next a uh, few minutes, you know, who knows? Jesus could come. The rapture of the church could happen in the next few minutes. Um, God willing, <laughs> the seat would be empty, right? If the rapture would happen in the next few minutes. But those are the terms. I'm not being an alarmist here. Almost 10 minutes into my talk here. I'm not being an alarmist here. It, it's happening right now. It's happening. But let's look at the Passover because there's some important things for us to consider from Exodus 12. Now, the, the Jew, Jewish people will be celebrating the Passover from April 22nd through April 30th. Uh, and each night they'll be celebrating uh, the aspects of the Passover. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, this, this month is to be... Uh, is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year, year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, each one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share it with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number, number of people that are there. You are determined the amount of the lamb needed in accordance to that which each person will eat. Very much a personalized aspect here. I love this concept because of how personalized it is. You get the amount that each person will eat. Above all things, God is a personal God and he cares about each of us personally. Just like each of our DNAs, you know who your ancestors are through your DNA. Each person has a spectacularly different DNA. We're all made in a different way, yet we're made like our ancestors. We're made in the image of God. He breathed into our nostrils the breath of life, but each of us is still unique in God's eyes. Verse 5 of Exodus 12, the animals you choose must be your old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and the tops of the door frames of their houses where they eat the lambs. That same night, they are to eat the meat roasted over fire along with bitter herbs and bread without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or cooked in water, but roasted over the fire, head, legs, inner parts. Do not leave it till morning. If some of it is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it. Be uh, Eat it with your cloak tucked into your belt, with your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste, for it is the Lord's Passover. Of course, the on that same night, I'm going to continue on, then I'll sum up. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals and will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt, because I am the Lord God. The blood will be assigned for you on the houses where you are, and when I see it, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate. For generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. Now, Here's the thing. God's promise is great, but it's also very specific. It's important for us in our hearts to always be ready. It's symbolized by that cracker, right? Uh, bread that does not raise because we don't have the time for it to raise. We need to eat it in haste. Tuck in your cloak so that you're ready to go. This is so important for us to understand that our hearts always need to be right with the living God. And we should, to the best of our ability, with the best of our conscience, with the best of our heart, always be up to date in relationships with other people. Don't ever let any strain come on or any kind of tension build up intentionally that you have not apologized for. 
Make sure things are right between you and others. And this shouldn't happen just because destruction comes and people say, you know, destruction or, or something happens where we're reminded how fragile life is. God wants to, us to live as if life is very fragile. It says in Corinthians that we carry around in this jar of clay, our physical body, an all-surpassing greatness that is of God and not of ourselves. We're hard-pressed on every side that we hold in this jar of clay an infinite, an infinite eternal gift, our eternal spirit that lives on forever. And I think when we're in heaven, we'll understand this more than we do now how fragile life is, how fragile our bodies are. That's why it's so important for us always to be ready, always to be up to date with God and up to date with each other. And it's so important for us to live according to the word of God. It's important for us to study the word and live according to the principles of the word of God, especially in the day and age that you and I live. This culture, lift up our heads for redemption draws nigh. This is a great time to be alive, but it's also important for us to remember that God is building this great ark of protection for people who are born again, and it's our responsibility to get as many people onto the ark as possible, just like Noah had to build the ark, preach repentance of sin, inviting uh, two of uh, the male and the female of all the species on the ark. Nobody, though, repented of their sins and came in except Noah's own family that protected them. In the same way, God is building an eternal ark now, and we need to get as many people into the ark as possible. And we need to put everything we have, all of our energy, all of our resources behind that. And God bless you as you do that as well. But the word of God, this is so important about the Passover. They anointed the doorposts of the house with the blood of the lamb. In the same way, Jesus came and is the, is the sacred lamb who takes away the sins of the world. But Jesus is both our protector and our provider. See, he's the one that protects us. It's his blood that's on the doorposts of our eternal hearts. But it's important for us to live under the blood of Jesus free from sin, willful sin that can easily overtake us. It's so important for us to realize that his, his mercies are new every morning. It's important for us to spend time every day, first thing, renewing, requenching, refreshing ourselves in the Lord. It's also important for us to celebrate that idea. And I know, um, I know celebration of the Lord Jesus and what he's done uh, for his blood to be um, on the doorposts of our hearts. See, the, I'm creating the symbolism there as Christian believers of what the Jewish people do for those nights of the Passover and those, the celebration of the Passover, that we always ought to be ready, that we eat in haste, uh, which um, is an important symbol when it comes to the idea that we spend too much time spinning our wheels, thinking things through, and not enough time in action for the Lord. See, Jesus tells us in his word that if any of us lacks wisdom, we should ask God who gives liberally without finding fault. If you're at the throes where you need to make a decision, what you need to do is weigh it out and give it to God. Ask God for wisdom but it's so important for you to make a decision and stick with it. If you need to change it up or change the trajectory as you go, then do. But as Christians, we spend way too much time worrying if we've made the right decision or be living in fear that we might make the wrong decision rather than walking by faith and not by sight the way that God wants us to walk. <laughs> Eat in haste. Be ready. Don't deviate from the word of God. We know we're living at the end of times because, and I think about, I go back to April 13th when that thing was unfolding, when we knew that the drones were coming from Iran. 
the response there determines whether the, the Battle of Armageddon starts to rumble and roar. The chariots of God are ready. And now is the time for us to celebrate our salvation by pushing forward, pushing in, not deviating from the word of God, anointing the doorposts of our house with the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and surrendering our lives to him. Now's the time. I challenge you to live all out, all the time for the Lord Jesus. God bless.